Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us quickly uh, brief, let me quickly brief you about meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So when we talk about meiosis 1, it is reductional division. Why is it called reductional division? Because two haploid cells are formed from diploid cell. So basically the ploidy of the cell get reduced from diploid to haploid. So it is reducing. That is why it is called reductional division. Whereas when you talk about meiosis 2, it is very similar to mitosis. It is an equational division. Why? Because here four haploid cells are formed from two haploid cells. So it is like haploid to haploid. So there is no change in the ploidy of the cell. So if it has n set of chromosomes, it still has n set of chromosomes. So here what happens, so if you look at the overall process of meiosis, what is happening? One diploid cell first forms two haploid cells, then these two haploid cells form total four haploid cells. So this is the entire process of meiosis. So the first step is reductional because diploidy reduces from diploid to haploid. The second step is equational because both are haploid. So meiosis 2 uh, will be very similar to mitosis. Now we will talk about each of the steps of first meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2. So let us talk about prophase 1 of meiosis 1. So what happens here? So if you talk about the prof, if you try to compare it with the prophase of mitosis, you will see that the prophase one of meiosis one is longer than mitosis, longer than the prophase of mitosis. So this prophase one is further divided into many stages. That is, it is divided into five stages because the stage this prophase one is quite complex. And based on the behavior of the chromosome during each phase of the prophase 1, it is divided into five phases. So the first stage, stage is leptotene. What happens in this stage? The term leptotene, it is derived from the term leptonema, which means thin threads. So what happens in this stage here, the chromosomes gradually become visible because before this, the chromosomes did not I mean, exist as such. They were all thread like chromatin threads, which were hardly visible. So here the individual chromosomes start condensing and they start to become compact. So they tend to be visible. They are, however, they are very close to each other. They are so close that they are almost indistinguishable from each other. They are so close. So in this uh, stage, the nuclear envelope or the nucleoli, they also disappear. In fact, the centrioles also migrate to the opposite poles. So these are some of the things which happen in uh, this stage. I mean, these are very common, which happens in any prophase. Now, how does it look like? Let us suppose if this is your cell. So you basically have two chromosomes like this. So let us suppose this is... So both of them are different. Why? Because we are talking about sexual reproduction. So one is received from the father, the other one is received from the mother. So let us suppose this is paternal, that is received from father, and this is maternal, which is received from mother. So here the chromosomes become visible at least. And the nuclear membrane, nucleolus, all those things disappear. Centrioles also move to migrate to opposite poles somewhat like this. The next stage is zygotene. What is the meaning of zygotene? It means paired threads. So pairing will take place in this stage. Right? Uh, anyways, we, I told you that meiosis is all about pairing and recombination. So that pairing will happen in this zygotene stage. What happens here? The homologous chromosomes start pairing together. So what are homologous chromosomes? Homologous chromosomes are a set of chromosomes which are like, they both belong to the same trait. So how will the homologous chromosome start pairing up? Something like this. Let us suppose this is one homologous chromosome, this is another homologous chromosome. Again, 
So this is how they will pair up. Right? So this is one set of homologous chromosome. This is another set of homologous chromosome. Because you have chromosomes like this. You have many chromosomes like this. So the homologous chromosome will pair up. So basically this means that both of them are two copies of the same chromosome. So this process is known as synapsis. This is called, that is pairing of chromosomes together is called synapsis. The third stage is pachytene. The word pachytene means thick threads. So you see leptotene was thin threads where you just had individual chromosomes. When they got paired up, they were called zygotene, which meant paired threads. Now the threads will be even thicker. So what happens here? Here bivalent chromosomes appear as tetrads. So what is tetrads? Now what will happen is that all these, so here you have two chromosomes, here you have two chromosomes. Now all these four chromosomes will come together like this. So it became even more thick and this the word tetrad means a group of four. A group of four that is called tetrad. Tetra means four. So here if you see one, two, three, four. So you have four chromosomes grouped together and that is why it is known as a tetrad. So tetrad formation takes place in pachytene. So you see how thick it becomes that is why it is named as pachytene which means thick threads. So now here at this stage, now this tetrad is also known as bivalent. Now in this uh, stage there are the sites where recombination takes place, those sites become visible and they are known as recombination nodules. Let us suppose, let me try to draw it a little bigger. Something like this. So if you see these regions, so these are the regions where crossing over will take place between this and this. So crossing over means exchange of genetic material between the homologous chromosomes. They will exchange genetic material. That is known as crossing over. So these recombination nodules become very very evident or they get displayed at this stage. That is pachyting. So it is, it is quite a long stage, longer than leptotene and zygotene. Here recombination nodules appear as I said. And recombination occurs between the homologous chromosomes. Now what happens after recombination? Then comes the diplotene stage. Diplotene, di means two. So this means two threads. So now that tetrad will again break into two parts. That is why it is called diplotene. So dissolution of the synaptonemal complex. What is synaptonemal? Synaptonemal is derived from the term synapsis. As a result of synapsis, that is pairing up, a complex is formed. That is the structure of the four chromosomes, the tetrad. That is known as synaptonemal complex. So this will get dissolved. So what will happen? Chiasmata formation will take place. Now let us see what is chiasmata. So here we will see let us suppose this is one chromosome. This is the second chromosome. It is just a rough picture. Now let us suppose this is the third chromosome and this is the fourth chromosome. So now this is from say maternal. So this is a different chromosome altogether. Right? So these regions, these regions are basically X-shaped regions because if you actually see, this is how it looks like. So these are X-shaped regions if you see here. So this is how it actually looks like. So that X-shaped region is called chiasmata which has already recombined some properties so half of it will be dark in color for example it will be something like this so this portion will be dark in color the remaining portion will be white 
Whereas here, this portion will be dark in color, while the remaining portion will be white. So that is how recombination will take place. And this egg-shaped structure is known as chiasmata. And this is a very long stage. This stage can last even for a couple of months. So the recombined homologous chromosome of the tetrad will tend to separate from each other. However, they will not get completely separated. So the egg-shaped regions where they will stay in touch, that region is known as chiasmata. So chiasmata is the region where crossing over had taken place. So recombination nodule are those points where the crossing over will take place. Chiasmata are those regions where crossing over have already taken place. And the last step is dikinesis. What happens here? Dikinesis. Kinesis again is related to kinetic. That means movement. So dikinesis means moving through. So here what happens is terminalization of chiasmata. So now it will completely break and it will form two separate chromosomes. So something like this will be formed now. So this is one. This is the second one. So the first one will look somewhat like this because these are the regions where the crossing over had taken place. And the second one will look somewhat like this. So the second one was all red. But now if you see the regions of crossing over, they are slightly white. So what do you see? This is your result. So the chiasmata is terminalized, that means these regions have set apart from each other, but now you get two haploid chromosomes. Right? So this is not, right now you don't get two haploid chromosomes, I'm sorry. So here you get two separate chromosomes where recombination have taken place. So now none of them are exactly identical to the paternal chromosome or exactly identical to the maternal chromosome. Both of them are a mixture of the two. So with this stage, the prophase 1 ends. So here the chromosomes again get fully condensed. Nucleolus disappears. Nuclear membrane breaks down. So all these things happen which are common to prophase. Nucleolus will vanish. Nuclear membrane will break down. Meiotic spindle will begin to form. That means the centrioles will move towards opposite poles here, somewhat like this, and then it will start to form the spindle. So now you will find the process quite similar to mitosis because the spindle formation has started taking place. This step represents transition to metaphase. Now, as soon as the spindle starts forming, it indicates that metaphase is. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.